Horror and video games go together like YouTube and terrible Let's Plays. It's hard to imagine a time where they didn't exist. Resident Evil wasn't the first horror game, but it was the one that popularized the genre and even coined the term survival horror. Resident Evil's first home was the Sony PlayStation in 1996, eventually being ported to the Sega Saturn and PC and then being re-released on the PlayStation with a director's cut and a special DualShock compatible version. Among these ports and re-releases was an unlikely version being developed by Hot Gen Studios for none other than the Game Boy Color. Capcom had announced the Game Boy Color version of Resident Evil for a 1999 release, eventually delaying it until 2000 before outright canceling the game entirely. It's not uncommon for companies to cancel games, but what is uncommon is to cancel them so far in development. It was estimated that Resident Evil was close to 90% complete before Capcom pulled the plug, and thus most assumed the game was gone forever. And it was, until 2012 when Assembler Games managed to raise the money and buy two copies of the prototypes off one of Resident Evil's original developers. And that's what we'll be looking at today. What makes Resident Evil so fascinating is that it wasn't merely a game that took the story and attempted to retrofit it into something entirely new for the Game Boy. Instead, Hot Jim was making a complete conversion of the game. By and large, the majority of the first Resident Evil game is on the latter of the two prototypes, along with both Jill and Chris's separate campaigns, plus their respective cutscenes. There's just one rather repetitive song on loop throughout the duration of the game, and for obvious reasons, no voice acting. The opening cinematic is also missing, and pre-rendered cutscenes are now a single shot from said scenes. There's also only zombies for enemies who, when killed, only kneel down instead of completing their fall animations. But up until the last leg of the game, to the lab elevator to be exact, the majority of Resident Evil is on the Game Boy. Now why Capcom decided to cancel this game may seem insane at first. It is, from a technical standpoint, astronomically impressive. Hot Gen did a fantastic job in capturing the feel and tension of Resident Evil, even if the graphics are butt ugly in most cases while being almost unintelligible in others. The game even functions near identically to what is honestly a fault. The well-known tank controls make a comeback, which, for anyone uninformed, is where pressing up on the D-pad moves your character forward, down moves them backwards, and left and right will turn them. This all sounds fine in theory, but what makes it difficult for most players is that the character moves depending on the direction they're facing, not where you press the button, which the original Resident Evil games expect you to understand this with its lockdown camera angles. What's interesting to note is the features that were planned for this game and their absence from the recovered prototypes. Instead of the original way of saving, which was collecting ink ribbons in the game and then using them with the typewriters to save the player's progress, the Game Boy version was planned to have a quick save feature, eliminating the need for typewriters in the game altogether. Players would also be able to disarm traps and fight a wider variety of enemies, ironic, given that the zombies are the only enemies that appear in either prototype. It should also be noted that with the Game Boy's limited controls, some sacrifices in precision were made. For instance, when a weapon is equipped, one must hold B to aim and A to shoot. This is very similar to how it functioned on the PlayStation, but aiming in the color conversion is less about precision and more about the general direction towards the zombie you're trying to kill. Despite there being extra bullets and clips laying around the mansion, like in the original, it seems that all the guns are set to infinite ammo, which is good. You'll absolutely need it. But perhaps the biggest reason Capcom decided to cancel the project upon the review is one we're very easily forgetting. No matter what you're watching this video on now, say your phone, TV, PC, game system, just about anything is going to have a better screen than the Game Boy Color. It's easy to forget that what we're looking at right now should really be shrunk down to a smaller size, on a screen that had no backlight and was significantly harder to see. Resident Evil was already a dark game, and while some areas had boosts in color to help offset the naturally hard to see screen, I just can't imagine playing this thing on the original hardware. And that was Capcom's reason for giving up on Resident Evil's Game Boy Color conversion. No amount of technical prowess could shake the feeling that it was a rather buggy, ugly mess. Granted, some of this can be attributed to the game being unfinished, as the earlier of the two prototypes only features Chris's campaign and several other unrefined or missing parts to the game. But, at its core, no amount of polish was going to save this conversion. The fact was, the Game Boy Color wasn't quite up to the task, and as Capcom ultimately decided, quote, We were not confident that the product would have made both consumers and Capcom happy. And maybe that's for the best. Capcom would go on to appease the few folks pining for Resident Evil on the go in 2006, when Resident Evil Deadly Silence dropped for the Nintendo DS. But for the Game Boy Color conversion, it was time to rest in peace. Ugh.